Hi, hello everyone. Welcome again to a new video. So this is going to be a second part on Agile Matrix dashboard. So we will uncover some other charts, some other matrix that we can utilize as part of our, uh, you know, getting insights in our work, getting insights about our project, helping our team to share them the data which is required and so that they can take up decisions. So that's what is the idea about the matrix and dashboard. Not all teams can use the same set of metrics. I mean, the approach is we provide the necessary data to the team, we reflect collectively, and then let the team take the decisions. So let us begin. So I am sharing uh, the cloud instance of Hira, uh, which is basically free, and uh, I have created my credentials. And these are the different projects which I have used for uh, all these practicals and this Jira learning series. So for uh, today's video, we are again going to utilize uh, the Agile dashboard uh, part one video. I will also share that particular link uh, in the description. So I mean the new viewers, uh, new subscribers, I would uh, request that you know you please go through the very first video to understand the dashboard part one. So this is our project Kanban matrix. So if I click on this project, uh, it gets opened and uh, this project is using Kanban as a template. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can see the board, uh, you know, this is the top navigation, which is basically a recently uh, added new navigation by Atlassian. So we can see the board uh, is having a backlog, which is basically a to-do list then based on uh, the stories which are ready for the development as per the definition of ready. So this is like selected for development, then we have in progress, QA and done. So uh, if I bring the left navigation here, how we can navigate to the dashboard. So this is our dashboard here. So uh, we can expand this arrow and we are going to use uh, this particular dashboard, which we can click in a new tab. Okay, this is, not the one so let me see uh, whether we have yeah this is the one here are dashboard demo so this is our dashboard that we have used in our very first video so what we did was we uh, added some of these widgets so we added a pie chart we configured it uh, so that uh, you know we get the result based on the assignee uh, how many total issues are there uh, what all issues have been assigned to different team members or assignees then similarly, we generated another pie chart on work item status, which says, okay, total issues that we have and based on the different status, like 22 issues are there in the backlog, eight issues are done, eight issues are selected for development. Then we also looked at the issue statistics, which, sell, which says, okay, what's the percentage of issues which is assigned to, let's say Bharat, and the percentage of issues assigned to creative learning, percentage of issues assigned to uh, Rajiv, and then uh, based on the query, we added some backlog metrics. Like if you want to track in our project, like uh, um, uh, how many stories are there which do not have a no story points, right? So this is backlog health. How many stories are there which do not have a description? Then we added a calendar widget which shows, okay, uh, on which date uh, on a particular month, what are the important days which were uh, something is due or we want to track some activities. So that was kind of a, recap of the Jira dashboard part one. So as part of today's video, what we are going to do, uh, we are going to add some new widget. And one of the very first that we can add is, uh, average time in status. So this is a very uh, useful widget, and we will understand uh, how it can be used. And the project name is Kanban metrics so this is our project so uh, it has been selected now uh, what we will do is if we look at uh, you know these are uh, the different columns so each column represents the underlying workflow uh, and what's the status uh, so how we can check you know these are the workflow columns but what are the status that have been used so what we can do we can go to the board settings and uh, if I bring the left navigation, we can click on the layout and we can click on the columns. So here we can see backlog is basically our backlog selected for development is selected for development. So it's almost the same. 
so basically column name is same as per the status. So we are good here. So what we will do, uh, we will select backlog and then we have, we can press the control key to select multiple statuses. And then we can select, uh, we, uh, we also have the QA, we have selected for development, uh, we have the UAT. So these are fine because if we just look, we have backlog selected for development in progress and QA. So we also have to select one in progress. So let me select this one. Okay. And uh, let's say period is uh, monthly and uh, average duration, we want to track it on a base of the da uh, daily. And if I save, let's see what it does. So I can make this chart a bit bigger. Okay, so it is telling like uh, on an average uh, in July month, we have uh, like 1.4 days that should remain in the backlog. That's the average time. We have almost like 17 days which, where the issues remains in, in progress. We have almost like 24 days where the issue remained in QA. And uh, we have almost like two days selected for the development. So what we can do is, uh, especially this is useful when uh, a team is kind of like utilizing a Kanban workflow and also at the same time, they have some challenges and they want to, uh, you know, discover what are the bottlenecks in their workflow. So they can utilize this particular chart. And uh, like it said, it says average time spent in a particular status. And what we can do, we can click on this one and uh, it will show us, okay, what all different issues have been considered. So like Kanban matrix 14 and nine, even though they are done, but I mean, it is considering them for the evaluation. So these issues were created on May, but they were resolved some like long time back in July. So that is the reason, you know, they are showing up in this particular because they remained open in, in progress uh, and they have been considered for 17.9 days. So we can, uh, you know, configure it, uh, you know, if we find, you know, there is a column which is not selected, we can again press the control key and select this column. We can increase the duration. So instead of 30 days, if you want to make it like this uh, 60 days, so we can also consider that. And this is how it is going to show now. So it is showing, okay, what is the average time in, in progress in May? It is almost like uh, one day, then we have close to like uh, 0 0.9 day, then 17 days. So like I said, it could be handy if you want to kind of like understand our workflow and uh, analyze it deeply, want to optimize it. So that's the usage. Now, another chart that we will try to add is uh, we can click on the add gadget and uh, we will say create it versus result. So if I click on this one, so we can close this thing and uh, what we can do is we can bring it here. So this is the first one that we have added as, as part of uh, our today's video, which is part two, and this is the second one. Again, uh, we can select a project or we can also apply our own filter, but we know this is the Kanban matrix project. So we will select this one and uh, days previously are 30. If I click on save, let's say keeping the default options. And if I expand this one, so what it is showing, so it is showing, okay, it's uh, like kind of like quite big. So it is showing like uh, in the last 30 days, we have seven issues been created and two issues have been resolved. So it's kind of a comparison, like in our board, in our project, uh, in Jira Kanban project, how many issues have been created in the last 30 days and how many issues have been resolved. So uh, these issues can be, uh, I mean, on a particular date, like let's say this is going on 17th of July. So if I click on this one, I can also open these issues in the issue navigator. So now it is going to tell me, okay, what happened on that particular day? So these two issues have been created. Now we can also verify and do some testing on this one. So what we will do, uh, we can close this one and we can keep this chart open. And uh, let's say uh, what we are going to do, uh, we can add a item in the backlog and we, we can say, Let's say we have created this one new issue to optimize the performance. And uh, let's say I just want to drag it uh, to the top. Okay, it has hasn't been. 
uh, okay now it is here and uh, let's say uh, one of the issue create conference page so what we did we created one issue so if i refresh my dashboard uh, let's see what it does so now we can see uh, today is 25th and it is showing me one issue has been created another thing that we can try it out is uh, if i say create conference page and uh, let's say this issue had been marked done so now this is uh, showing me uh, you know the done has been become five and if i again go back to the dashboard and i reflect on this one uh, i can close this uh, uh, and then now here it is showing one issue has been created on 25th, one issue has been resolved. So this also gives us a good insights. I mean, uh, we do not want to track like everything which our team is doing, but I mean, all these charts, all these metrics is for the team to take necessary decisions. So it could be part of their daily hurdle where they go through, you know, round. Uh, but I mean, we show them some of the metrics, not like everyday basis, but, but maybe once in a week so that, you know, they get some insights about uh, their work and so that they can take the decisions as well. Now, another thing that we will do as part of today is uh, again, we will click on edit and we will say rich text, which is not of Atlassian, uh, but it is provided by this guy. And if I say add and uh, I will click this get i will add this gadget twice and i will tell you the reason why and i will say done so the very first text gadget what it does is it allows us to you know uh, keep some necessary information in our dashboard so what we can do uh, we can say like this is our dor the definition of ready and uh, I can say, OK, so what is our def definition of ready? So we can say uh, user story has acceptance criteria story has been prioritized. Story is estimated by team. OK. Dependencies, if any, has been disclosed. Wireframe as needed has been provided. So let's say this is what is the uh, DOR and then we can click on save. Similarly, uh, let's say we want our team to have their definition of done captured as part of the common place, which is our dashboard, so they can mention their uh, definition of done. So for a story, it says like uh, code is uh, implemented as per all accept acceptance criteria. Code is unit tested. Code is peer reviewed. Code is checked in and let's say build is passed. And then we can say another criteria is QA tests. QA test passed. And finally, story is accepted. So let's say this is our uh, criteria. So uh, now what will happen is, you know, this dashboard becomes a single source of reference for our team for looking at, okay, what's the agreement? So this is more like an agreement. So I can, I will just change this one and uh, we can write whatever we want to. We can say definition of uh, ready and uh, this is our definition of done okay and uh, we can you know make it uh, together so this this is our definition of ready how do we ensure in our project that okay requirements are good enough ready enough for us before we take them in uh, our implementation and then on what basis we are calling the different stories or different uh, uh, issues as done so these are the agreed criteria so this was kind of like all about about today's video. So what we did was we added 
uh, these two definition of ready and definition of done in the dashboard. And like I said, you know, uh, uh, the teams may vary where they want to put their definition of ready and definition of done. But I mean, this dashboard is a very good place because it's, uh, you know, becomes kind of a single page of reference, single dashboard for all and everything. And then we also edit like average time in status and we also discuss like, you know, how this particular gadget can be utilized, especially to uncover the uh, workflow bottlenecks and understand how we are using different states in our workflow. Um, what is the average time spent in status? Uh, each of the status of our workflow, and then we also looked at created and resolved chart. So these are the four things that we have uh, understood today. So I hope you guys like this part two of Agile Metrics and Agile Dashboard. And uh, I would request if you are new to my channel, please do share, uh, support and subscribe. Thank you so much.